Hey, man. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm excited to talk to you. Of course, I'm a big fan of yours, man. I've been. Oh, thank you, man. I, I just wanted a funny story. I just wanted you to know that throughout the 90s, you were pretty much Johnny Rico. I never mentioned you as Casper Van Dien. It was always Johnny Rico when I talked about you. You know, I, it's still to this day, I, it's, it's, it's the name. It's the second name I'm called the most. So <laughs> I'm, I'll be at a store and they'll be like, Johnny Rico, what are you doing here? And I'm like, holding toilet paper I'm like it happens even <laughs> just we go uh, so uh, but I do my kids grew up with me getting yelled at my whole life because people just yell quotes from Starship Troopers and they're just that's just normal to them you know people yelling at your dad hey come on you want to live forever and that, that's, <laughs> my kids are used to that so um and and Captain Dale Dye who was our marine coordinator for Starship Troopers yep. never called me Casper Go, Rico, go make sure the troops have water. We'd have 1,400 extras, so I'd have to go around to each person to make sure they had water, and not that they couldn't go over and get it themselves, but, you know, he would call me, and, and, and he didn't call me Casper. He called me Rico, and you better believe I answered and listened and followed my orders from Captain Dale Dye. I mean, he, he's got, uh, I think he's the recipient of either three or four Purple Hearts during Vietnam, yep. and, and I had much respect and and uh there's no way i was gonna not listen to him so <laughs> you know. absolutely well such an iconic movie and of course like if i ever get a chance to talk to you i'd love to talk to you more about it but of course we're here to talk about the flood i watched it last night i always watch the movies the night before i talk to somebody because i want it fresh in my mind oh, wow. um so here's the thing with the flood i figured like if it was made in the 90s it would be like getting a wide theatrical release if you know what i'm saying um, you know what, when, when it was pitched to me, it was pitched to me like this, Casper, Con Air meets Anaconda, but with alligators. Yes. I went, ooh, all of that sounds good to me. And then I read the script and I liked the relationship between the characters and I'm like, you're gonna do it with Louie and it's with Damon Hillen and Brandon Slagle. So all people I worked with before in Thailand, which I love, and I thought this could be fun. And uh, I already have a great relationship with Louis. We've done a couple of projects together. We've been friends for years. He's an incredible fighter, but one of the best fighters I've ever worked with, but a, even a better actor. And so I was so thrilled because we already have a relationship that is really complicated in our script. And uh, it makes more inter it makes it more interesting because there's nothing quite black and white in it, even though we got the cops and, the, you know, so we do have black and white, but we have a lot of gray areas and we have gray areas between the prisoners and we have gray areas between the prisoners and the cops and the gray area between the prisoners and the prisoners and the other guys and the other. So you don't know everything with the established prisoners the, the new, the, the new criminals coming in and the cops, so many different variables. And I thought, and then you throw in alligators. Now look, alligators, I live in Florida, so I avoid them all the time. I just avoid them when, where I'm walking, I, I step around them, away from them. I've seen people step over an alligator, which is the dumbest thing you possibly can do because they can snap you in a second and right. they can get you and take you down. Um, and that, you know, you see those things happen in Florida because people do, they'll, they'll try to take selfies with it. Never, right. ever. I'm just going to say this right now. I live in Florida. Never, ever take a selfie with a, with a gator, period. You just don't do that unless you're far, far away. But I've seen people go real close to them. And there's people that have done it that have been caught by them and taken under and killed. That is Florida. That is the truth. That's alligators. Having an alligator, you know, if there was a, a storm coming and it was in a room with you and you were in now in a building and it was flooding and there's alligators in there. I would feel sorry for you because there's not much you can do. There's right. not, they're, they're, they're the apex predator. You might have guns, you can shoot in the water, but you're going to be deafening, deafening yourself. And there's still the chance that they could come after you because now there's blood. So more will come. And, and the thing is, it would be a nightmare scenario that just would be the worst scenario so this part of it i thought was cool i haven't seen the movie you've seen it yes so you I have have. On me. so i don't know how it turned out or anything like that i know they gave it a rated r which is yes. like what they starship troopers we just had cga things which was the same thing we had with starship troopers just giant bugs and we had to react to just nothing there which is the same we had to do in this movie I was going to ask that. That was going to be my next question. I was going to be like, obviously, you know, you're acting when there's nothing there. It's like, how do you psych yourself? Like, what kind of like exercises do you do to be like, okay, there's an alligator in front of me. I have to make it believable to the audience. Yeah. You, you know, you have to put yourself in that scenario. And hopefully we were able to do that. I have no idea. I don't know how it turned out. I've heard good things so far, but you know, 
people could just be lying to me. Um, <laughs> but but you know, you have a scenario. That's the script. That's and then it's the director and the vision he has, and then the the you have to trust that, and the actors just have to go for it. And I saw what some of the actors were doing with it, and they were really going for it, like with the alligators coming and then the reactions to it. And then the pulls, the stunts were pretty intense. And then working in that water, which started out clean every morning, but would get dirty by before the middle of the day. And then it'd be just disgusting at the end. Oh, and man. that was every day. It was just gross because people, you know, people getting their head shoved under when you get shoved up, you come up, snot comes out and you're just going, and you're just get, you're cleaning it up and everybody's in that. That's all day long. Plus, everybody's going in and out with their their shoes and the equipment and the clothes, and the clothes aren't made for it, so it gets gets to be a little bit more extreme. Who says Hollywood's glamorous, right? <laughs> yeah, well, it is. I I love it. Good point. I would never do this. If somebody goes, "You want to go in that water?" and I'm like, "Hell no!" They're like on camera. I'm like, "Yes, absolutely." <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> so let's talk about your character, Russell Cody. So I I love characters that are you know like you were saying, black and white. He's not black and white. He's, there's a lot going on with this guy. And obviously, you know, I I, I label him an anti-hero. I mean, mm, apples and oranges. I mean, like, describe him and, you know, what's your take on him? I think he's somebody that, that has had a lot of struggles, got yep. in trouble, and then was trying to find a way out. And he's a military guy, ex-military guy, so he has that. But then he gets caught in a situation that then puts him, he gets even more in trouble. And he gets blamed for something he actually didn't do, but he was participated in the crime, so that makes him guilty. And he has to deal with that and live with that. And I think it's a consequence that he's not very happy about. But then he uh, he still has, he still won't go that way, even though he's already participated in something, he, 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 won't, he won't agree to it. So he's, uh, you know, he is a guy that has a moral, has a moral code, still has a moral code and, and his friend, did up until that point until he you know ended up killing some cops and and then that got him labeled this and now he has to deal with that and be labeled that and become that and i think he has uh guilt and remorse for that and then also wants to you know wishes he could make uh make it better but you know there's not much he can but he also wants to live a life and so yeah i think he has got some gray areas but he's definitely has some qualities that are were decent and i liked that about him and i think that also the other people had decent qualities too because there were other people that you know i don't know how everybody deals with the things that they deal with i still think that a crime is a crime and you have to deal with the consequences i do believe in that i have a higher moral compass than my character did but i tried to make it where he wasn't all bad because i don't think that those are good and even louis played his not all bad you just have to have a moral compass there's certain things that he does that you you, you like when when he hands the shotgun to the cop right like whoa okay so he's like but then he has the other words that he says later you know they're like ah so yeah there's there there there's a battle going on and i think you know everybody has internal battles i think for the most part humanity uh tries to be the, the, the decent person. I think that's more or less, most people have a, a, a better moral compass, a compass than, than, than say the crazies. But then there are people that will go and do the, the fanatical crazy things and that, that's the consequences we all have to deal with. And sometimes we can be involved in that. And then we have to reap those and go, I should have done better before. Right. And I think that's what my character's dealing with a lot. Absolutely, absolutely. And I love those kind of complicated characters. I'm sure you love, you know, playing complicated characters because it makes you, you know, it, it brings you out of, you know, and, and makes you work on those skills that you have. <laughs> well, you know, you look at this and, and and I think I'm a better actor now than I was when I was younger. And I think that that basically comes with, well, I'm still acting all these years. I've been acting for 35 years now. Right. So I think that if I was doing something wrong, drastically wrong, then I, I think I wouldn't be working still. And I do have friends that had to leave because it was too difficult. And it is, it is a difficult build business. But I think that as we get older, we have more life experience. I've been divorced twice. I'm married. I have kids or adult kids. I've gone through the all the traumas you can go with kids and, and your parents and your real life and, and all the traumas that you get. And I think those all add different levels to you as an actor. You have, at least you have the tools in your toolbox if you can access it, if you can, you know, go there. And as a, as an actor, we're, we're, we're putting on a play, we're playing, we're being kids. And when you're a kid and you say to the kid, go, you're the queen of England, even if they don't know what that means, the personal, the kid will sit up and like, oh, yes, I'll be the queen. You know, we all have to, 
And we try to do as actors, we try to go back to that innocence of what we did as kids. Yep. And that's our job because we're playing. Every act is a play. Every actor is doing a play, whether it's a, a play, a movie or a TV show or whatever it is, we're putting on a facade and we're having to try to bring that to be as realistic and real as we can. Even if there are no alligators there, we have mm -hmm. to know they're gonna put them in later. And that's right. gonna, there were no bugs in Starship Troopers. We didn't find any bugs. That was just dirt. Yeah. I just found the dirt. Same thing <laughs> so what we did have in this one was the water, which, sometimes makes some of it easier, but it makes a lot of it a lot harder. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much. I know you're doing a lot of these today, so I can't appreciate, I, I can't appreciate, I appreciate so much you taking the time out to talk to me. And I always said, if I ever wanted, if I ever did get a chance to talk to you, I mean, I know everybody knows you for Starship Troopers, but I'm a fan of the tracker that you did with Russell Wong all those years back. I love that. I, I had a lot of fun doing that. I bought the, the fights in that that were really good. There's some that weren't so good, but the ones that were really good were all, choreographed by a guy named Garrett Warren, who's my mm. my best friend. And also the he did the stunts in second unit for Wolverine, Avatar, Lincoln, the master. I mean, he's like, he's just, not, you know, Logan, not Wolverine, Logan. He did it for Logan. Right. So he's like the real deal. He's like, and he's the martial arts guy that I fought with for a long time. He's also the godfather of my kids. I'm the godfather of his. But he came up and did the stunts for that where they looked really good. Him and, uh, and uh, not Vic Armstrong, his brother, uh, Andy Armstrong. They both came up and did the stunts for me for three days, or and those were the best fights out of that movie because yeah. of him. Absolutely, but well, it's always been a favorite of mine, and it's, I, I always do a double feature with that in Starship Troopers when I'm watching Casper. Oh, and man, man, thank you so well. Yeah, and your name is John, so you're the real Johnny Rico there. So <laughs> absolutely, welcome to the Roughnecks, brother. Ab, thank you so much, Casper. I can't. I hope I get to talk to you again in the future for something else. You've been a delight. Um, love you. Love your stuff been with you since the beginning so i can't appreciate you know well, John, like I said. Make, sure you, make sure you tweet it all to me or instagram it to me i'll follow back and re-instagram and everything awesome all right well you have a good rest of the day enjoy the rest of your interview sir you too thank you thank you so much all right have a good one bye-bye